Okay, pesticides, um, another gym, custom meta. Um, so I'll tell you how I built my team and we'll go through my first two games. Um, I was really excited for this meta. Um, grass, poison, bug, ground with band Ferrothorn. Um, it's quite a quite a tight meta, uh, which is what I like, but not too tight. It's where you know there's certainly some a lot of viability within uh, within this, um, and that, that's what I like. I, I like metas. I sort of timeless was a bit like that. Um, Rainbow was a bit like that. Um, Sinister was a bit like that. You know, it's, it's sort of. Yeah, but these, they're the sort of metas that I enjoy the most. Um, so I was really excited about this. Um, and another thing I liked about this was that because Therathorn was banned, um, usually within the grass types, I, I always talk a lot about how um, I always like my grass type to be, like grass is one of those types where I like having like the king grass or, or the queen grass or whatever, the one that beats the other grasses. Um, and Therathorn, Often, uh, the inclusion of Therathorn makes that uh, there isn't there isn't normally a definitive uh, top grass because Therathorn will often beat that thing and then lose to Cherry, for example. Um, so Therathorn's exclusion here um, immediately made me think about the two the two grasses that were the sort of top grasses as Abona Snow and Tropius. Um, and with uh, with there being bug and grass types here, um, Tropius looks nice, but it's more because because of how hard it loses to a bomb, to a bomber snail. It's more a flying type, and while I absolutely do want a flying type, um, I don't want to pick Tropius. Uh, if I was to pick Tropius, I would pick it as a flying type, not my grass type. Um, and there are a few flying types here. There's um, Tropius, Vespiquen, Golbat, um, Glingar, Gliscor. I was, I was now, one of the things I was looking at in a flying type was the ability to beat a Bomber Snow, which um, Shadow Scyther actually does beat a Bomber Snow, which is mad. Um, so I thought I'll, I'll leave my flying type to the end because there's a lot of versatility there. Um, and I'll start off with, um, with the Bomber Snow as my. It's my grass type. Um, as I say, beats the other grass types, even beats Cherim from a standing start in some scenarios. Um, and it's a grass that beats the Flyers, which is just incredible. Um, it only really loses to um, the counter users, uh, things like Toxicroak, Escavalier, um, It'll lose to Galarian Stunfisk. Yes, it will lose to poison types and bug types, which there are plenty of. Um, but they're going to have to take a weather ball or two. And so you're probably going to get a shield off them. And it's similar with Stunfisk, Galarian Stunfisk, actually. So I, I think a Bomber Snow um, is a really, really good Pokemon for this, I think. Um, I think it's probably the best Pokemon in this and it's that good that I'm not sure I'll use it much because um, um, because people will have to take it into account when they're built picking threes against me they'll think oh I've only got two things that beat a bomb snow I have to bring them or, or, or you know something like that so um, so that's why I was keen to bring a bomber snow, and, and that also is something I'm keen to address in my own team building. I don't want to have too much that's dead weight versus a bomber snow. Um, with that in mind, um, the next pick, I wanted it to be something that um, could beat all the poisons and all the bugs. Um, that could beat a bomber snow, so it acts as a bodyguard to a bomber snow, um, but also beat a bomber snow itself. Um, and 
There, you know, there, there's one thing that, that fits that role really nicely. It's, it's very good, of course, and that's Galarian Stunfisk. Um, I think between these two, I've got a really versatile core where uh, even things that are super effective, that even the counters to these things don't want to take charge moves from them. Uh, and that's something I always value, uh, value very highly in my Pokemon. Um, yeah, being, being hard-walled will, will more, more often than not cost you a game, like it'll cost you the game. Being soft walled, or well, being soft walled, that's sort of a bit of an oxymoron, isn't it? But just having a losing matchup doesn't cost you a game. Um, so, yeah, it's always something I try and keep an eye out for. Um, and what I immediately notice about this pairing is that they are both weak to counter. And that's something I am planning on alleviating later with, um, with the flying type, of course. But I want to address that now, uh, before, well, not before I forget, but um, while well, it's sort of fresh in my mind. Um, I have a golden rule of, of team building, and that is if you've only got two checks to something, uh, they can't be weak to the, the, sim, uh, you know, the same things. So um, I thought I'd try and find something else that bodyguards are balanced now really nicely but also is strong against counter um, to sort of bodyguard stun disc in a, uh, in a slightly, you know, in, it could be used as a bodyguard to stun disc as well. Um, and Haunter does that beautifully. Um, with its ghost poison typing, it's going to beat the vast majority of um, bugs and poison types. The dark poison types could cause it an issue, um, but typically they like to attack, or certainly Skuntank is the one I see being the biggest, or the, the Skuntank was the uh, pick that I saw being the most useful of the Dark Poison types in this meta, and Skuntank tends to attack with Poison Jab. So uh, Haunter's matchup there isn't horrible, so I quite, I quite like Haunter, um, hits everything hard, of course. Um, and makes counter users think twice, so Toxic Rogue, Heracross, just completely walled. Well, Toxic Rogue can land a, um, a Mud Bomb, and a Scavalier can land a, a Drill Drum. Um, but generally speaking, Haunter will come out on top in those matchups, and, and similar to Stunfisk, it beats. Um, it beats all the poisons and bugs. So, well, I, a better way to look at is to look at this is between Stunfisk and Haunter. Nothing, nothing jumps out from the poison, poison and bug categories. Like I, I can't, I wouldn't be able to name off the top of my head, bug or poison that beats both Haunter and Stunfisk. So I'm giving myself options and well coverage options to bodyguard a bomber snow, um, which is important given that I think a bomber snow is so good. Um, for pick four, given that I have got this core that I'm really happy with of a Bomber Snow and uh, Galarian Stunfisk, both of which are weak to counter, um, I, I can see that being a popular core. Um, both are very good mons individually, you know, you can open greatly, um, and then this meta suits them down to the ground as well, so I can see a lot of people picking that, that pairing. So I want a counter user of my own. Um, quite keen to stay away from Toxicroak. Um, there was a reason. I forget. Oh, it was because of the weakness to ground. Um, so I'm looking at either Heracross or Escavalier. Um, and I actually think Heracross is a better pick. Um, in, a, in a vacuum, I think Heracross is a better pick here. Um, but I went for, and I, I have a Heracross, um, but I went for an Escavalier, and the reason I think that is because of its ability to be Wishcash um, quite comfortably. Uh, you know, Mud Boys are really good here. 
so I can you know, I can sort of see I can sort of thought I'd see a lot of wish cash. Um, I think Heracross is a bit bulkier than a Scavalier. And he's got those new moves, which just nothing wants to take. Um, but I went for a Scavalier, uh, despite having a Heracross, because uh, I think he pairs better with, with Haunter. Um, on the basis that um, Worming and Trash is a thing, and it's something Haunter is terrified of, and it's something that Heracross is also terrified of. Whereas the Scavalier, because it has the steel type in, rather than being weak to it, which Heracross would have been, it actually resists it. Um, and given that I've already got Haunter and Abomus now that are going to really struggle with Wormadam Trash, um, which is a great mom, uh, I was expecting to see a fair few of them. I didn't want to add a third, um, a third weakness to that. Um, and it's, we'll sort of see why when I, when I round out the rest of my team. So I, I went with the Scavalier. Um, and one thing I'm noticing now with my team as well is that I've got three things weak to fire and there isn't much fire in this it's like fire fang hippo there's um, if you want it to be uh, you know there's there's oops, weather ball cherim and if you want it to be really cheeky there's like hidden power fire gastrodon which did cross my mind um, but um but I didn't, didn't really fancy it. I thought there's better mud boy options as uh, as I go along. So building this sort of this fire weakness is something I'll address in my last pick. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, but now for the fifth pick, I'm seeing that I've got well, I've got Haunter and Stuntisk that are weak to uh, ground. Escavalier doesn't particularly want to take ground types on. Um, so the only thing I've got that beats ground types at the moment is a bomber snow. So I'm now wanting to look at something to act as an anti-ground to that could potentially bodyguard um, Haunter and Stunfisk. Uh, I'm looking for a second option other than a bonus to do that. So I'm looking for something that beats, as I say, something that beats ground and isn't weak to steel or isn't weak to, to counter. Uh, so the sort of more traditional mud boys. Um, come in, come in nicely there. Now, as I say, I'm weak to fire, um, which is in its most obvious form going to be through hippo, um, and I'm weak to mud boys. Uh, so I really like to look at Swampert as my mud boy rather than wish cash, um, because it's it's spammy moves water type, so it's super effective on the hippo do Whereas wish cash is um, which cash is sort of spamming move is ground, rather than, so it's not super effective versus, uh, versus hippo, so it's not going to be as efficient at dealing with hippo. Um, and the, the pure power of, of Swampert um, and, and Hydro in particular uh, means that I, it, it tends to beat wish cash if I remember rightly. So that's that's nice as well, given that I'm looking for something that's going to beat Mud Boys. Uh, so, sort of like King Mud Boy works works nicely in that in that sort of theory. Um, I'll be running Sludge Wave as the second move rather than Earthquake. Um, I don't see what Earthquake's giving me here. Um, and Sludge Wave will give me something to hit, um, a, you know, a big move to hit. I think like Tropius and, and, and Bomber Snow. Uh, I don't think a Bomber Snow can switch in on Swamp Hurt. Uh, I think Swamp, uh, Sludge Wave will kill it in one. Uh, in the zeros before a bonus note gets to energy ball, this one has got a couple of mud shot leads, and that's something that wish cash can't do. So, yeah, really, really like the look of swamp pits. And then the last thing I wanted to pick was my flyer. Um, and as I say, there's options for this there's Tropius, which I think is on paper in a vacuum the best option, uh, there's Golbat. Which I always think is good. Um, there is Gligor, uh, Gligar and Gliscor, which I've never really been a fan of. Um, Vespiquen, um, really nice pick. Um, but with Vespiquen, I kind of thought that 
uh, if everyone's running, or if, if I see a lot of people are going to be running um, a bonus nose on Fisk, then that, uh, SP Quinn doesn't really take those on. Um, now, Stunfisk is going to be hard for all the flies to beat. Um, Gligar and Glisco have the best matchups, but I really don't like those. Um, so I'm, I'm going to I'm happy to accept that whatever flying type I pick is going to struggle with Stunfisk. So with that in mind, let's try and focus on the one that has the best matchup with the bombs. Um, and Shadow Cipher. As I alluded to early, with, earlier, with Fury Cutter and X Scissor, beats a bomber snail. So I really, really wanted to go for that, um, but I, I just, I just couldn't do it. Um, I just couldn't do it. I wanted a. a so I'm, I'm a little weak to Tropius here, um, and I spoke about the weak weakness to. Um, to like fire funky powder on earlier, so I think ultimately I, I looked at this the flying spot and thought right, it needs to not be weak to fire, um, which Tropius is, which the Shadow Scyther is, and it needs to be Tropius, um, and so it, it which which Scyther doesn't, um, and so it, it left me with Golbat and I'm really pleased with Golbat. Uh, I've almost no can't switch in on it because. As much as it's doing super effective damage to Golbat, the Poison Fangs come so quickly and are so spammy that with a, a, a slight energy lead, Golbat will take the pumps now on. And I think Golbat's a really nice switch, like a really nice save switch in this. Um, the hardest counter is more or less Glarian Stunfisk and um, Wormadam, but neither want to take a Shadow Ball. So, yeah. So there's the team, really happy with it. Let's see how it plays. So round one was against Twiggy. Um, absolutely gutted to get in round one. He's a, he's a very, very good player. Um, he's going he's gonna to hit elite next season. Um, top 25 in the UK minimum. I'm calling it now. And he's got the sunny cherry. Um, I spoke about in the team builder, I spoke about being terrified of, of fire. Uh, and I think the Cherim's probably more dangerous than Hippo because of its spamminess and the fact that Swampert can't take it on. Or, well, it can, but it doesn't really want to. Uh, no, it, it can't. But yeah, if, if you're using Swampert to take on Cherim, you're playing a dangerous game. Um, so, yeah, I was really concerned here. Um, but on the other side of that, um, Glaring Stunfisk is very, very good for me. Um, Cherim's the only thing that can um, that can take it on well. Um, there's the mirror, of course. Um, so if I'm going to use st uh, Stun Fisk as a save swap here, which I, I am because of how good it looks, um, I've got to have a lead that beats a Stun Fisk. Um, and I'm going to go for go with this Cavalier for that because. Um, if <laughs> whatever he's counter switching into Stunfisk, it's gonna it's gonna want to be able to take the Stunfisk on, and he, don't, he probably ain't gonna want to switch his own Stunfisk in at an energy disadvantage. So the only thing that leaves is the Cherry, and if he's switching Cherry in to take on the Stunfisk. Cherim then isn't taking on a Scavalier, um, which is good for the Scavalier. Um, and with the Scavalier's versatile uh, charge moves, I'm running Drill Run Aerial Ace. Um, if, it, if it comes back in later and is able to farm something down, it's going to be able to hit everything hard. Like you don't necessarily want the Scavalier to take on Jump Bluff. Um, because count is resisted, but if you've got a, a you know, 40 50 energy advantage, then you're gonna win because you're gonna hit it with area laces. Similar with gold bat, um, you may not win as a gold bat, but you'll do a hell of a lot of damage because you'll get you know the area laces will add up, um, and gold bat isn't hitting you super effectively back. So, I, I like the look of this, and the third thing has got to be a chain counter. So, 
Uh, so goal back there is my is my best share encounter. So, um, so yeah, it's it's goal back in the back. So let's see. So I think it's Cavalier jump off, not good. Um, so, but again, I can save switch um, stun whiskey into this. No, I think here he's sort of seeing that he, it's probably going through his head that he doesn't have a great deal to switch in on this, so he's staying in and he's going to probably drop an energy ball. Um, and he still stays in, so I'm quite quite content here to, um, to fire away with the rock slides. So now he brings the G-Fisk in and there's no real need for me to bait here because I can come uh, I'm happy to let this go down take shield advantage and farm him but he doesn't shield um, and I'm able to get to the rock slide first no okay uh, but again I think I decide I'm happy to let it go down so I don't I don't bother shield him um, because as I say I can come back in with uh, with the scavalier and farm down. Now I could go into goal back here. Um, but I think I try and stay in to take a shield advantage first um, before I go before I go into the goal back or oh no so maybe I want to take to absorb the energy which is also a valid uh, a valid play. Strange that he went for energy ball rather than aerial ace, probably just a misclick. Um, the bulk from Golbat. And here we see the spamminess, uh, the spammy nature of Golbat um, and how it's able to um, to put up a good fight back against the Bombers now. It's going uh, to force a shield here. Can I get to a third? So I probably could have got to a third. Um, and again, I'm gonna let it go down. I'll come back in with the Scavalier to farm. Uh, I think I'll let this through because I'd rather save the shields for area laces on the jump off or from the jump off. That's uh, still a lot to be fair. Um, but now it's just a case of getting the back-to-back back-to-back uh, -back area lace. Um, yeah, and that's uh, that's game one. So I'm starting to think about game two. I, I think this is the right line, um, so I'm going to use it again. He he didn't use Cherim in the first game, so I don't want to massively uh, make, I want to make huge changes to massively overcompensate for Cherim in case he doesn't bring it. Um, but he leads it this time. Um, so I'm going to try and switch to the uh, G-Fisk on the weather ball. So I see you go for it and it doesn't quite go through. So I'm forced to shield. At this point, I have to make a decision, like, am I going to just switch straight into it or am I going to try again? And I decide to try again and it comes off this time. So now I've got an absolute load of energy on, um, on a Scavalier. And he, I didn't see gold back from him, from him in the first game. So I'm feeling that the Scavalier is now incredibly dangerous. Um, we see the jump off switch him. Uh, the health I'm at. Um, I'm sure he'll be able to overcome the Stunfisk, um, but that's fine. The important thing is is that I've um, is that I've got that energy on a Scavalier, and uh, I've, I've still got the Golbat Cherim um, matchup lined up in the back potentially. Uh, I am down a shield, but the energy I've got on a Scavalier um, 
will hopefully help me to make up that that shield. And I get the shield there, so I think it's a smart shield because it stops me from farming down um, jump off with this cavalier, but he lets me get through another one as well. I think he's perhaps just getting a bit greedy with energy or losing track of where I was farming or looking, losing track of where I was at. And then he throws here, which was a, a mistake on his part, but um, happens to the best of us. And so again, I'm going to choose to come in with a Scavalier here rather than Goldax. Um, because it probably is within farming range. And if I can get to the back, if I can get myself to two area laces, then all of a sudden I'm going to beat Sherry. Uh, don't quite get to farming down. But again, the energy is more important on a Scavalier than the health. So I'll let it through. I was already at the back-to-back the -back charge move. So I'd rather have that, that extra little bit of energy on, on gold that is probably more useful than it was on the um, on this capital here. So I have to make the switch. Now he's got Stunfisk in the back, which isn't good for gold that, but here we see uh, just how much Stunfisk doesn't want to take a Shadow Ball. Um, and the main flying type I was considering other than than Golbat were, well the main two were Scyther and Tropius. Um, more so Scyther than Tropius, but Scyther hasn't got that sort of big hit that, uh, that Golbat has. Um, I'm gonna let, let this go down and I'm gonna come in with this Cavalier and hope that I can just spam through uh, the Stunfisk and the Cherim. So I'm expecting he, him uh, to go up for the double, so as not to give me any free charge moves, uh, fast moves, but he doesn't quite get there. So I'm just about able to pull through. Um, so despite the uh, despite the bad lead, um, the energy on on Scavalier was about to so enable me to change it around, to, to turn it around. Um, Game three, I'm going to leave Golbat this time to mix it up, but keep the same, keep the same line. So, lovely lead. Straight counter switch into a Scandalier. Um, and I'm in control at this point. Um, I'm... I know I need to keep switch advantage, so I'm going to shield this. And then he baits me. That's fine. Um, so I can get from Drill Ram. And then for some reason, despite knowing that I need to keep switch advantage, I let this through. So, a huge mistake on my part. Um, but what can you do? Uh, and this is a match I don't want to be in. Because uh, we've both got to go for Earthquake, despite the fact that I've got much more health than uh, than he has. So, it's, it's just not an optimal, it's, not, it's just not an optimal use of, of energy. Um, and then I make a mistake here. I absolutely needed to keep Golbat for um, Cherim. You know, Stunfisk versus Chumpluff with the energy I had was, was a good matchup to be in for me. So it was silly to switch out of that. Um, so yeah, just making mistakes here, but tune it up, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, it's good to get all the mistakes out of the way uh, in games that they don't, they don't really mean much. Um, so yeah, I've, I've farmed up a lot on the Golbat. Able to spam out some Poison Fangs. Pitiful damage. Can we go for another one? Yeah, I don't think it kills. So I've got to try and farm, yeah.
Go for the Shadow Ball. And then I swap straight into the Stunfisk so as not to give him a chance to throw the energy. Um, I mean, I have to throw the Earthquake, as wasteful as it is, but I have to kill him before he gets a chance to throw energy of his own. And at this point, I'm thinking I might just have turned it around, depending on how much these rock slides do. Um, so despite the misplays earlier, I'm still in with a chance here. Um, so it doesn't, it's not going to do it kill. See how much the energy the weather ball goes. Nice chunk. Now I'm going to go for a rock slide again here, but looking back, I do wonder if Earthquake does more damage despite it being resisted. Um, maybe going up for the Earthquake was the right play there, especially given how, much, how little health it leaves it on. And the fact that I'm not, I'm not getting to two rock slides. So yeah, I, th I think Earthquake probably might, possibly would have made a difference there. Um, And then, yeah, he's got a weather ball saved. So, interesting game. Uh, I made a couple of mistakes there, but good to get them out of the way. Um, and I think what I noticed, what I thought was interesting about this, given that I wasn't live coming, uh, was that I used the same three every game. And that's something that I don't do very often in, uh, in live comms. Um, Maybe tell you everything life comes, I don't know. And, and this is why I think this this format might be more, um, might be better suited to the way I play. So we'll see, we'll see. So yeah, good, good game one with, with Twiggy. Um, huge relief to get that, that cherry mat of the way. Um, and then round two, I get Nathan with his, <laughs> with his hip out on, which I presume is fire fan. Um, so as soon as one fire type is one fire type is dealt with, the next one rears its um, rears its teeth, so it were. Um, but I really like Swamp Duck versus him. Um, other than his double grass, it's it's likely to be Stunfisk, Hippo, Wishcatch, and a Scavalier. Um, Thomas Snow and Tropius are issues, obviously, um, but they can't. They have to be really quick to switch unless they want to catch a Sludge Wave, and I imagine the Sludge Wave kills the Thomas Snow. So um, I really like Swamp Pit. I don't want to use it as a safe switch because, as much as it can force a shield or do a big damage to the grass types, I'd rather use it in a more destructive manner. Um, so that's. Um, that's out of the window. Um, but knowing I want to use Swampert, I need to pick something that beats both the grasses. Um, and Galarian Stunfist does that really nicely. Um, so I'll probably bring, well, I'll bring Chief Fisk in the back as a, as a safe swap again, because what's going to switch in, in what's going to switch in on Stunfisk? Um, the grasses can't, Mimira doesn't want to, the Scavalier can, but isn't going to want to take a hit. Wishcash doesn't want to take an earthquake. He probably doesn't want to take an earthquake. So, yeah, that's a decent, decent switch. Um, and then, given that the given that I, Swamp that doesn't want to take on Tropius and Abomas now, and Stunfist doesn't want to take on um, Pardon and Wishcash particularly, um, I feel like Abomas now is the best league for me. Um, so let's see how uh, see how this plays out. Into the hip only terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, I want to see how much the fire fangs do. It's not a huge amount. I'm I'm going to be able to get some weather balls here, um, and these will do a lot of damage. So my plan here is to force the shield and then switch out into swamp put. Bit of lag, and we end up with a simultaneous switch, and I've got very, very lucky there with that simultaneous switch. Um, Scavalier, if it was lined up against either of my other two, would be in a positive matchup. Um, but 
So you know the way it was. I think maybe maybe Nathan panicked when he was seeing how much Obama Snow was doing to Hippo. Um, understandable. So then Obama Snow comes. Uh, Swampert. I'll, I shield the first move. Given that I've got the shield advantage, that's a relatively free move for me, uh, and I'm able to um, able to take take down the scaffolder. And I've still got a bit of energy because I've farmed, um, and that's important because he brings in Tropius. Um, and I'm able to land the sludge wave, um, which is huge. Yeah, it blocks it. And I'm happy to let this go down because I've got two things in the back that beat Truckus. I've got a shield advantage. He brings the hippo back in uh, to try and uh, fire fang me down before I can get to a fast to a charge move, but he doesn't, he doesn't quite do it in time. Um, and then Stunfisk is able to come in. Uh, given the, the positive matchup Stunfisk has versus Tropius and the fact that he's not at full health, um, I, I shield this. I didn't want to risk it being an earth power. Um, so quite quite happy with that. Just going to play it safe. And... Um, yeah, the energy advantage I have. Um, I mean, Leaf Blades will hurt me, but I'm going to get to the Rock Slides faster, and I'm pretty sure L2 would KO it from, from this range. Yeah, so that's the first one. Clearly shows that the the second one will kill. Um, and there it comes. So game one, I was I was lucky with the simultaneous uh, switch, and that, that helped me out a lot. Um, I'm expecting him to run a similar team in game two, um, just because, as I say, he was quite unlucky the way that worked out. Um, but goal that would have been really good against him. Um, with that line he used, and given that I think he's going to run a similar line, um, it would be sensible perhaps for me to run Golbat. Um, so I do, I run Golbat instead of a, a bonus now. And there we go, into the Tropius. Beautiful, really, really nice lead for me. Uh, so I want to get Swampert in if I can. So the other two things beat it. Um, now I don't go straight into it, because I want to either put a uh, chunk of damage on it or get a sh on the wish cash first or get a shield to make the swamp it uh, more likely to re win the switch uh, so yeah now i've got a shield advantage i'm more likely to retain the switch advantage here because i can use a shield um in this matchup catches me by going straight for the blizzard That's a big, really uh, really smart play really aggressive play um, so I'm just going to fire off my uh, fire off my hydro cannons, and here now this is why this is why I did the shadow stayed in the shadow ball, um, because I've got the shield advantage, um, I feel more comfortable shielding now to, uh, to help retain the switch. And yeah, successfully retain the switch. So I'm expecting him to come back in with Tropius. No way I was going to get to Sludge Wave that time. Um, and I'm back in with Goldbat here, presumably. And he is, this, this is an interesting play, so he doesn't switch out. Um, and that makes me think that whatever he's got in the back is weak to Goldbat. And given that both of my Mons can take on Tropius, Maybe it makes sense to me to try and switch to Stunfisk now to take on Tropius and build up a bit of energy, so that's what I do. So when he does switch, I've got an energy lead and what he brings in. Now, unfortunately, it's Scavalier. So I've got a shield. Well, I've, I've got to be careful here. Um, I go straight for the Earthquake to demand the shield, uh, which, he, which he gives me. Um, now I could let this through and try and sweep with Golbat, 
but he's on a lot of health. Um, more health than I would like him to be on, given that made him neutrally. So I'm going to go for another earthquake. I decide I'm not going to get there, but I decide too late. Um, and so I've essentially just wasted the shield that I gave him. So indecision on my part cost me my stun fist there. And um, he's going to get to an area lace fast. And I've no, no, no means of blocking it. Um, so uh, Nathan's able to turn that game around on me. Um, yeah. Indecision indecisiveness costing me that one uh, but as, as much as I lost um, as much as I lost that game it was down to my own indecision at the end there um, now that it worked well for him his, that team so I'm ex again I'm expecting him to run something similar um, so I do flirt with the idea of of taking Haunter as the um uh, you know, as, as an end game mon, rather than Galarian Stunfish, um, just because of you know the Escavalade caused me problems, um, uh, and that's what Haunt is there for. But I, I, I ended up deciding that because I've got Golbat, do I need two? Do I need two Escavalade counters in the same line? So yeah, you can see there, I, I decided to put Haunter in the in the team. Um, and in the end, I decide against it. Um, yeah, I decide against it and go uh, go straight in with the same line. I mean, I, in my head, I'm just backing myself now to play better than I played in the first game and just be more decisive in the end game. Uh, so the, the game starts off the same way. Um, so I'm feeling good about this. Again, he goes into... Well, he, well, he goes into Stunfist this time rather than Wishcash, but I, this is something I can switch so I'll put straight into, so this is even better. Um, so now I've got a bit more energy on the uh, on the goal bat, because I've not had, to, not had to throw a shadow ball at, um, at his mud boy. I think I let this one through, because I know I can tank an earthquake, and there's no point me using a shield at this stage, because he'd just be able to come in with Dropius and beat me. Um, so, yeah, I throw the uh, cannon, hoping to, hoping to kill him, and it does. Again, expect the Trobius to come in and just farm me down, which, there it is, it comes in, it spawns me down. Uh, so I go into Golbat. Presume I go into Golbat. Again, he doesn't switch out. So I'm thinking, yeah, probably got a Scavalier in the back. So yeah, maybe if I'd gone Haunter, I would almost certainly have won. So I go for a, a charge move here. And at this point I'm thinking, I, I think he's got an aerial ace. So I'm going to switch directly after this to try and catch it. I don't know, maybe that was the next time. So yeah, I stayed and get that second shield. Uh, oh, I'll get the shield. There we go. Go for the switch there. And they catch the aerial ace. Now I don't think um I don't think at this point catching the aerial ace was important. Um I think he should have leaf blurred me at this point in the game still in my hands. After what happened seeing what happened last game, I don't mess around going for earthquakes, I'm just gonna go straight for rock slides to chip away. Um does a lot of damage. And he goes for a charge move here. Now I'm going to pause it because if I let this through, um, he kills me. Uh, I can come back in with Golbat, and I should be able to win with the shield advantage. Um, that is the safest play. That is what I should do. Um, however, what I decide to do um, is shield this and take the and get the stone edge the rock slide off on him um which isn't necessarily a bad play given the situation i'm in but 
as we'll see, um, well, as we'll see, it, may, it means that catching the area lace was important. So I'll press play again. So here uh, I'm, I'm thinking no shield, no shield. And then I decide at the last minute to shield. Um, and that's a mistake. So I get to the, uh, get to the rock slide. Force the shield, uh, force the shield off him. Can I get to another one? Now he, he chickens out and rather than goes, going for the farm down, goes for the charge move. And that's what I mean. Had I caught, had I, you know, if I'd not caught the air lace and taken a leaf blade instead, um, he would have been able to farm me down. And then at that point, I'm in a much tougher position. As it happens, um, I come in and recall that and I throw a poison fang just to finish it off. Really don't want to risk taking another air lace there. Um, and then Tropius comes in and I can get to another poison fang to, I think this will kill. So, yeah, um, I was more decisive and in the end it paid off. Um, still made, you know, still made a bit of a mistake in the end game, although, <laughs> I don't know. Callback didn't have as much help as I thought it had, so maybe that was the right play. Um, yeah. But again, I ran the same team two games in a row. I, I ran double mode by in the back three games in a row. And had I been live coming, I don't think I would have done that. Uh, I would have perhaps, you know, when I would be you know, talking out loud with, with my thought process, I would have thought, maybe, you know, it would have, it sounded, it sounds worse out loud. It sounds like a worse idea out loud than it does in practice, right? Um, and when I'm not live coming, I don't, you know, no, I don't sit here, out, I don't sit here and live come to myself almost and, and talk out loud. Um, so live coming, I don't go with my gut very often or as much as I have done in these two games. Um, and it's and it's worked out. Um, both incredibly close games. Um, how whether the extra being able to concentrate a bit more on playing helped me. Um, I don't know, but uh, but we'll see. I, as I say, I, I think this this is a sort of matter that suits me, and so certainly the sort of matter that I like. So I don't know how much of it is that, but um, either way, two really good games. Um, and the final three games will be coming out shortly. Well, not shortly, but soon. Then I've done it. Um, so I hope you all uh, hope you all tune in for watching that. And if they're all as good as those two games were, um, should make for a cracking video. So catch you later. <laughs>